welcome back to the beautiful island of Puerto Rico and the lovely city of San Juan, host city, for the Medallia Light Puerto Rican Open 10 ball men's event. The focus of our attention right now, along with Eric Orlifson, I'm Jim White. We're going to be bringing you all the action here. And Eric, I mean, you've got, in terms of a Fargo rate anyway, the man on the left, Josh Filler, the man on the right there, Elaine Roland. Yeah, but a 100-point difference, and, you know, it's, it's not tough to be a 100 points difference off when you're playing against the highest Fargo rate in the world, but the edge that Roland has here is he's pretty much a national hero, kind of a godfather of the game in the country, and you can see in the stands all, all the supporters have come out. Everybody hoping for him. Short race format. He's a veteran in the scene. Had many good wins in the past. Eric, I've seen him play on center stage before last year, in fact, and he loves this. I mean, he's got the support of everyone here. Well, not everyone, but the majority of the of the fans in attendance on the main stage. Josh Filler, that's, a, that's some kind of hurdle in front of him. Sean here as long as the one doesn't go in, but he's made it. Well, no one knew it was in quicker than him. He just bought himself a world of hurt. The shot that was supposed to be bringing Roland out of his chair. Well, at least he could find some humor in it, but uh, he's laughing on the outside only, I promise you. Can we get at this two here from the short rail or the side rail? In favor of the short rail, going to require a fair bit of left spin to kind of avoid the three. Nice judgment there. Came up safe, where we're always going to have to play safe in return. Could look for him to thin the two up the rail here and play the four tennis blockers. Ball last right into the angle. Got close enough where we took the jump option away for filler. We have to go two rails at this. Probably be calling it in the corner, but low percentage. Looks like he might have enough of the, of the long rail, which will help him a lot. He does if be looking to hit the bottom side of the two here. I didn't do it a little too much, but left the shot. Well, you have to feel that every chance that Elaine gets, he's got to he's got to put pay to it. He's got to put the heat put the heat on Josh and keep it on. Yeah, as with all good players, if you let them get going, you're going to be in a bad spot. So he'll try to assert himself as quickly as he can here. Swilling that ball away from that side rail to be able to get over a little bit more into the center of the table to attack the four next. That was tough. Kind of caught the point there, killed the cue ball off the rail. Position's natural. Just got to focus on the pocketing here. Toughest shot in this round, Chris. I still the round on pretty well. When you're a home crowd favor like this, you can go both ways. You can kind of put more pressure on yourself, or if it starts going well, then you really feed off their energy. I've got more angle here so we can come back closer to the seven, which I like that play. Say, Eric, that's the only danger is being too straight. He's not going to be able to get closer to the eight. He's shaking his head. So straight, he might have to go rail first, but the seven's pretty close to the rail.
did go over there first, about as close to the eight as he, as he could. Nice thing is the eight's lined pretty well. Nine's actually a little sharper inside than I first thought. I'm going to come above it here. See a guy slow rolling a long ball like that, Eric. It's quite often a man who's in complete control of his nerve. Even though this is a big moment, Nolan looks pretty settled out there. Yeah, nice start for him. Made a couple good saves. Got the edge. On the <laughs> and opens his account. And listen to the round of applause, and they're only going to get louder the more games he wins. Yeah, the crowd will let you know what happens here. And they'll be well aware who Josh Filler is, too. So it's a big moment, big stage for their man. Two players were seated in the first round winner side matches here. The filler was obviously one of those seeds. Now we've got men's, we've got ladies' action, we've got team play. 125,000 on offer for the men's 10 ball open this year. 37,500 top end. That will go to the eventual winner. Going with the offensive break here. You see a big dispersion of the balls. Healy getting the 2 7 back on the side. Didn't get one. Big spread. <clears throat> Might be a little thin on the cut, on the direct cut for filler, but he can play the bank option if he doesn't like that. Seven passes the eight into the right side. Nice control of the white there, though, Eric. Yeah, it's going to be able to slide it past the left side of the six. So get close to the three. That's the racks line. Pretty connect the dots. Six on the side, seven on the opposite side. Grew up in Germany watching players like Oliver Ortman and Ralph Souquet. Pretty good players to model your game after. Torsten Holman. Thomas Enger. They just, I don't know what they were feeding them over there, but the champions just kept coming. Definitely a program that's built on. Proper coaching, proper player development, treating the game as a as an athlete. There was maybe seven major titers, titles in pool. I think Filler holds about six of them. Extremely successful on the career he has going. Yeah, out of all those players that I mentioned, a lot of them. You know, work very hard at their game. Filler looks like a just a natural out there. He's fast, thinks quick. You see a lot of emotion from him at times too, which is unlike a lot of his countrymen. But he is gifted. And the combination of hard work and talent, right? And this is these are the results. Easily leveling the score at one each. Well, not quite the applause that you got from <laughs> from Roland, is it? Appreciative enough, though. <laughs> yeah, just workmanlike. Josh Filler there, 
but noticeable how well he controlled that cue ball. Players would have had a little time out on the practice table just to knock him around and get a feel for the conditions. Again, Roland has won a match to this point. Filler was seeded. Filler's wife, Pia, pretty good player in her own right as well. Yeah, and they'll actually be playing on the German team together in the team of them. And they will go down as one of the favorites. Solid square hit there, looking in two balls. Shot on the one, and the cue ball's traveling nicely over to the two on the left side rail. Could be a little strange. He has some angle though. He's actually going to have to power up a fair bit here. Didn't like that option. Looks like he's just going to back off and play safe. Could be a cross bank available as well. A situation like this, Eric, I favor the safety. I mean, yeah, you can thin the two to the left and use the seven as a blocker here. You could actually roll on to the seven. Similar shot that roll on played in the first rack. Tough to kick safe out of this position. It's going for the jump. The cue ball is really close to the seven. Shows that he's a confident jump jumper going after this. Only has to jump over half the ball, which will help him. And way up to get that cue ball up quickly. Not quick enough. Very tough. Yeah, just looking at his tip. The tips on those jump cues are like brake tips. They're really hard. Yeah, I missed cute there. Actually saw that in an early ma earlier match as well. well. For the moment, it looks like Filler made the right choice playing safe on that too. That's bought him a great opportunity. Didn't want to be on the rail here and got a little straight as well. Really kind of shaking his head about it. A lot of spots he could have been in a better position in, but this is what the top players do. They find a way out of it. Just recover. Yeah, that was interesting. He was cueing at that a little bit more level, just getting his sighting, and then he raised the back end a little bit more once he was confident that he was, his alignment was solid. Delivered the cue. Very left eye dominant. You can see that. Camera angle right down the line there. I feel it had to take a little extra time on the four for sure because he just didn't get the angle he wanted. But when players fire in balls this quickly against you, it, it, has an intimidation factor that goes along with it as well. Yeah, and Filler doesn't waste a lot of time. 2 1 is advantage. The opening set. It's a race to four. Two sets. If it goes to a deciding set, there's a shootout. Six players started the tournament. They'll play down to the final 32 and do a single knockout redraw. I don't know about you, Eric. I'm really looking forward to the team event. Sure. I think that uh, that's where a lot of the drama and 
the pressure comes to the forefront. And you've uh, you've represented Canada in international events as have I, and uh, it's, it's a different kind of pressure unless you've experienced it. You know, you really know you're playing for your country. You're always playing for your, yourself and your country, but when you've got a couple people in the chairs waiting for you, if you hit something a little wonky, that walk is a little longer. Oh, yeah, and, and, and just being in a team event overall, it's, it's, it's the highest pressure situation. I mean, it's, it's not something that players are necessarily used to. Probably 90% of the events they play are singles events, if not more. Is that easy to establish a rhythm? Nothing down. So rolling out of his chair with a chance at the one. Two is pretty tied up by the four. Tough to tell if it goes in the top right corner pocket. If it doesn't, he has a decent angle to try and develop it. Does pass. Just making the one. Might not have got on the two though. Yeah, his body language will answer that question. This one is barely in. I promise you, as this cloth gets a little worn, where that one struck the cushion, there's no way that one drops. Only on the new cloth. A pocket, except that shot. Let's flick the six. Wow, that's the second real careless mistake. The missed two in the last, and here, and you just cannot afford to give a player like Josh Filler these kind of options. Too hard to get on the three, so Filler's actually going to open up the three and stick roll on right behind the four here. Didn't open it up exactly how he wanted. Took away the easiest kicking options for Roland. Might have just enough of the left side rail here. Might have to elevate the spin. Well, that puts him on two fouls. Three's makeable on the top left. Filler does have to consider playing safe. If he can get the cue ball. Yeah, he's just he's gonna go with the run out here. Again, pretty low, open look for Filler. Hasn't really made a mistake yet, as expected. Got a little straight again. Looks like he might have a small angle going to the left. If he doesn't, he can draw straight back for the five in the corner. Like enough angle to just play the cue ball to the left, right around there. Just making sure here. Cue ball's going up table a little bit. That's when you see that small grimace on his face, but he'll be okay. One thing I always like about filler and players like him is when they get into a gear, they just don't slow down. Do they get up? Their mind works quick. They're quick around the table. And that in itself can be very intimidating. 
Yeah, I think a big part of playing at this speed is just kind of accepting where the cue ball ends up. And if you have to make a small adjustment, you have to make a small adjustment. You know, not everything can always go perfect in this game, and some players are just able to accept that and adjust quickly. And if you're talented enough to actually execute it, it's a very dangerous weapon. He's a fun player to watch. I was there when he won the U.S. Open in Las Vegas, and he put on performances like this virtually every match he played. 3-1 his lead over Roland. And again, the crowd hoping for a chance to get off their hands. Filler, hoping to keep them sat on them. More play coming your way tonight on this table at 7 o'clock local time. It'll be Hall of Famer Darren Appleton up against the colorful Nayuki Oi from Japan. You won't want to miss that one. And if you want to flick your screens over to table number table number two, Mika Imanen, another Hall of Famer, against Vitali Batsura. So a lot of the big names starting to move their way through the draw. Hitting the break very well, just not quite coming up with an extra roll, the pocket one. Roland has a shot at the one here. Cue ball's kind of running into the six. Probably be looking at playing it to the left of the six and possibly playing a two-eight combo. Tough to do that though at that distance, judge the exact amount of draw. And draw into the four. It's a good play as well. Overcut it. Yeah, just a few too many unforced errors from Roland. I mean, he's got a very unique style, too, standing to the right side of his cue, as opposed to being behind it and down the line. Yeah, kind of like an old school style, pumps his stroke a little more, a little quick on the cueing action, a little bit more feel in his stroke, kind of played better when the pockets, that type of style plays better than when the pockets were a little bit bigger back in the day, but still a very capable player. But as you were saying, every little mistake against a player of filler's caliber is very, Puts you in a tough spot. Gonna have to get a pretty specific angle on the five to be able to draw straight back for the six. Could choose to play the cue ball two rails towards the five. Or one rail across. You can see him trying to power out of the angle there, possibly. Yeah, he still came up short. He's crossing the angle here. He's going to have to judge the speed perfectly. Natural angle, though. He played it back into it. Smart shot there. Notice how he hit the second rail and was able to play back into the line of position instead of just lagging ac across one rail. The cue ball controls improve greatly when you're playing back into the angle. Gives you more room for error too, Eric. Yeah. Especially on when he has to get a specific angle like that. If he didn't have to get as perfect of an angle, he might have gone one rail, but he knew what he needed to do there. Played it well. 
First set is always a big one, too. You secure that, and you know the very worst you're going to get is a shootout. And that puts the heat on your opponent. So as expected, Phil playing pretty much a flawless first set here. Roland took the first rack, but that was the only time he bothered the scorekeeper. 4-1, Josh Filler secures the opening set, and he'll sit down, reset, and look to continue with the form he's shown us. Stay tuned. Doesn't matter what the format is, the better player will still win. This tempo to win the title. He is your champion. You world champion. Second year that this event has come back to Puerto Rico, and uh, it's growing. More tables in play here. Still, the leagues, it's like a built-in crowd that brings everybody to San Juan in November. All these league players with a chance to see players they only ever see on TV or on the live streams. You know, get the selfies in, get the autographs, go back home and tell the story. Yeah, take it from me first. If you're if you're a BCA qualified player, put this on your list of tournaments to come to. A very nice venue, a chance to see the best players in the world. You know, in the the league play, 650 players in the CSI leagues that are here, and 30 percent of them actually come from this island. Sure. So. You know, pool is booming in Puerto Rico. And, uh, I mean, as as many of you may be aware, you know, the head honcho for Predator, Karim Belhaj, well, Puerto Rico's home for him. Yeah, so, so you know, promoting the game in this country going forward. Seeing Karim at the, the welcoming party last night on crutches. So that <laughs> couldn't have been easy. Did it end up being a tennis injury? I thought, I, I thought that's what I heard. I, I heard that too, that, uh, yeah, he was wearing a knee brace. And, you know, he's playing tennis. I don't know who the guy was on the other side of the court that created that. but Had him moving, yeah. We wish him the speediest recovery. Yeah. Over to our left, Karen Core Is that playing one of her first tournaments in a while? Yeah, I haven't seen Karen around for some time, Eric. Been dealing with back issues, but nice to see that she's feeling well enough to come out and compete. Yeah, just like Allison Fisher. 
She was dominant. Her day, what a force she was. But it's going to be quite a week. Quite a week of first class pool. Men's, ladies, we mentioned the team event. 16 teams taking place. And a terrific venue. If you've never been to the convention center in San Juan, it is a special venue, one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. There we go. Buckle in. We'll see if the one-way traffic continues for Josh Filler. Set number two. Big spread. Balls everywhere, but just nothing lining up to pockets. He's going to have a decent chance here. A slow roll this possibly can take tracks back to play the two in the side. There's the danger of trying to go to the side route. He was going to run into the nine a little more often. He does have a shot on the two, and the cue ball is playing naturally across for the three. I feel like against a player like Filler, he has to go for it here. Got to take the chances. I agree wholeheartedly, Eric, but I've got to tell you. The table time that Roland has had has been at a premium. Shots like this. Got it. Oh, that's a great shot. I was about to say very missable given he just hasn't been at the table much. That's a great effort, that one. So what he's worried about now is running into the seven. He's got to get back over to the right side of the table for the four. He'll want to play with some left spin, try to hit the on the bottom side of the seven and continue forward with the cue ball. Good shot. Surviving here. Eight's going to be a tough ball as well. And still a tester pocketing angle here on the four. Position lies well again, though, for the five. Good shot. I feel like it's too risky to play the five off the eight. He'll be considering it because the eight really isn't in a good spot. But the chances of the five going thick off the eight are pretty high. Oh, he's going to go corner and open it up. Here's a good shot. There you go. Made his way nicely through this rack into a spot where he's a favorite to run out now. Roland has a good pace around the table as well. A lot of experience, knows all the shots. Seems to be holding his nerve decently. Oh, that shot. Commentator's curse there. Got safe, but odd one to miss after making so many tough shots to get to that point. With all the hard work. Just get the feeling that maybe he let his guard down. And didn't give that shot the attention it was due. <laughs> Might have called the eight here. Intricate shot. Big combo. Look at that shot. Came up a little quick too. He's shaking his head, but that pretty good effort. He's got plenty of angle. Up and down if he chooses, or play the seven into the corner, his choice. And he had plenty of angle to drop onto the nine. It was perfect. Well, maybe, given that he's so close to it, just a little more angle again than he would ideally have wanted. Tough rack for roll on, but he, he showed that he's still a threat to make it a match. Just a scratch on the side there. Just didn't get quite through the rack. But if he's staying positive in his mind, he'll be happy with some of the shots he made there. Yeah, but Eric, you know the nature of the pool player. You don't think about what you made. You think about what you missed. 
and the score line, which is looking a little ominous right now for Roll On. Yeah, 1 0. This one that looked like he was going to duplicate the last set in the first track. It's the easiest of sevens and turned it right over. The man who is undoubtedly going to be into the Hall of Fame when his time comes, the resume he's compiling. A lot of 20 something right at the top of the game now, not something you would have seen in, in the past. Sanchez Ruiz, winner of six or six to eight majors already as well. Fedor Gorst in the tournament here. Racking up a good resume. New era of players. Here goes the nine. That ball actually tracks around four rails. It doesn't go in as often as some of the other balls. But it does have a track four rails towards the pocket. You see it here. Signs for Roland. He slumps down in his chair. Looks way too comfortable in that chair. Yeah, he knows he's in tough now. That was short of intended speed. Look to the stars from Filler, but no celestial help coming his way. He'll want to draw the cue ball between the 4 8 here. Small issue with that shot is he might have too much angle where he can't draw it. Kind of, kind of running into the 4. Dangerous. Good scratch off of it. Just call for his extension, too. Worth a little bit more thought. Sometimes looks easier from the camera angle, doesn't it? Yeah, he was able to get enough into it. Playing the one hole he could hit there. Solid line, but definitely better off than he was on the two. Shoot the right part of the pocket here, develop as much angle going to the left as he can. Expected pretty much flawless match from Fuller here. All these players are getting in stroke now. There's so many events too, right? They're, they're playing three major tournaments a month. As long as they're able to keep their stamina up from all the travel, they're really getting more accommodated to playing in pressure situations. I think you you draw a very good point, Eric. It's uh, being fit in the sport has never been more important with the amount of travel and the tournaments that are on the calendar now. Mm -hmm. You really got to look after yourself when you get a chance. You got to get your rest. You got to make sure you eat well. It favors the younger players a little bit. It comes a little bit more natural for them, but for sure they're still treating themselves like athletes. Nothing in a set that would put him into round three. What a message Josh Filler is sending around the convention center for those that may be witnessing this performance. Yeah, he'll be looking to keep his game sharp, sharp for the teams. Had a second place finish last week in 
Virginia in the 10-foot tournament. <clears throat> Made it to the quarterfinals in the nine ball. Actually had a lopsided scoreline in the final of that tournament, losing 10-1 to Shane Van Boning. Pardon me, I think he made a comeback at the end, but he was pretty far down most of the match. Mainly on the break. Gave us a break and a run out in the last. Time. Looks like he has the angle on the one, and Roland needed this chance. Three is going to be tough to get on. A lot of the angles to pocket the three are blocked by the ten. Two is kind of limiting the movement. Right, the five is kind of limiting the movement off the two. It's not an easy chance here. Might actually use the five to get the angle he wants on the three, as long as the five doesn't come back and hit the cue ball off the side rail. Three. Just had to play for containment there. And I think he might go at this, just considering the score line, he has to, has to make something happen. Could lay up behind the ten. Four is in a very inviting spot, though, right over the pocket. So if he makes the three, that I think could be good on the four. Just try, just overcut it a little bit and get safe. Not quite, unless the point got filler. I don't think it did. Well, it would have been hard to put any more distance between the cue ball and object ball than the filler is addressing now. But it's on. It's a 10 here. Filler's not afraid to take his time, too, when he's not quite sure of the situation, right? I mean, I think that's one thing that players that play fast can, can get into a, a bad habit of, is, is that they shoot every shot fast, right? Uh, you know, he, he shoots the shots fast that he's sure of. If he's not sure, he does this a lot, too. Kind of comes, comes around, looks at the angle, slows himself down a little bit. But when he does know he's, he's in real good, he's not afraid to let go as well. It's calculated, right? It's not, you know, you, a lot of faster players who kind of think, okay, well, they're just running around. It's not. Well, given his track record, too, Eric, he knows how to close a deal. Yeah, yeah, very good under pressure. Here, taking advantage of all the small mistakes that Rulon has made. Yeah, he's made some tricky runouts. And again, making the game look a lot easier than it really is. Such is the level that Josh Filler plays at. 3 0 second set. It's been a very familiar look, that one from 
Roland, the best player in Puerto Rico. But to compete against the best in the world, you've got to raise it. Such a welcoming venue, such a welcoming country. Moving in the middle here. Yeah, the only thing for filler in this match is it's only been about 25% of the break. So he'll think about the different breaking strategies going forward. Talking off there about Alex Pagulain, we watched his match earlier, and uh, he was employing a very tactical break, kind of like heavily cutting at it, jamming up the rack a little bit, just relying on possibly making the one, but not really spreading the rack as much. Yeah, and just banking on the fact that he could outmove his opponent, mm -hmm. which you know he's one of the best in the world at. Everybody's had different strategies for this. I think what, one of the most notable ones was um, in the World Ten Ball Championships last year. Everyone was breaking from the side rail, and Kachi chose to break from the middle. Pretty much the only top player that broke from the middle, and he ended up winning the tournament. So it's, it just depends what suits you best. Recognizing what's working for you, trying to reproduce very specific hits. It's not just where they're breaking from; it's the speed, you know, hitting it at different angles, and having more than one break. As well. It's actually very interesting compared compared to playing with templates where you're just seeing the same break over and over again. A fortunate role there for Filler. Good contact. Don't I think it made made its way behind the 10. So the edge of that too just sticking out from filler. Ooh, wonder. Yeah, you, I was actually Eric, I was wondering if he chose to slow roll that. He was relying on that table being dead still. And you know something? These tables have settled. They're all level pretty regularly. There's a lot of weight there with those slates, and these tables settle into that carpet. It's about as slow as you could ever slow roll a ball, too. And you're talking about very fine parts of the ball you're trying to hit. We'll roll on with the advantage in this rack. <laughs> At it. Very tough to kick the judge with the ball behind you. Not look at the ball. Just missed it. So it's going to be on two here. Third foul is not easy to execute for Roland. But he's going to have to consider it, considering where the five is lying. Combo is there on the five. Could choose to play offense. Gotta keep in mind with a player like Filler, he's gonna have to trap him up real bad here to get a third foul. So it looks like he's just gonna go for the run out. I don't think he could opt to try and use the four to lay the trap. He might, yeah. It, that, that's, a, that's a good play. Not into it too much though. Yeah, I thought he wanted to stay above it so he could drift that four down by the five and the eight. Lay the cue ball behind the seven. That would have been a real tough hit. He now, did. Yeah. That option's not there. We talked earlier, Eric, about 
having to make changes in the game plan. These are deceiving how much you have to cut the five here. But Roland will know that. If there is a mistake to be made, definitely favor the undercut side here. Good shot. Didn't quite get the cue where he wanted on the five, though. Still has him on two fouls, but again, not in a great spot to put filler in a real bad spot here. Wow. Disaster. Totally unforced error again. There have been a few from Roland, and every one has been costly, and this one might be the last one that he has to pay for. Got too straight here. He's really looking away. He's surprised that he's got out of line with ball in hand. Be interesting to see what he plays here. He's, he's really too straight. I mean, he could play a big power draw with right spin. Yeah, that's all he had. And at that speed, it's a very tough shot. Uh, he may have got real lucky. I mean, Roland's delighted to get back out of his chair, I promise you, but. You know, after such an ambitious shot that Filler took on there, you have to feel that Roland deserved at least a chance at the six. Some five seconds here. Oh, he had his extension. Six didn't pass. He doesn't play. Ball in line at the seven, and he did. Pretty sure he didn't leave the right edge of it. There's the small part. He's going to tie it up a little more. He left the small edge. Cue ball's tracking towards the side here. He's going to have to put a Decent draw stroke to get the cue ball to the right of the side pocket. But again, he'll be happy just to have another chance at this game. Good shot. He's been sitting for too long. Filler is going to pounce here. Strong performance overall. And we'll be back to the drawing board. Got too straight again, so we just got to make one more shot. Ten more. Good shot. For the match. He's kind of rushed at it a little bit, which is which is his ammo. He shoots quick, but I think on a match winner he would have took an extra second. <laughs> Roland smiles. Listen to the applause. They waited a while for it and the missed 10 from Josh Filler. Keeps Roland in the event, at least in the A side of the event. And he's got one foot out the door and the other on a banana peel. And you were saying 106 players there? Yeah. That was the final tally, so. You know, you get bumped to the left-hand side of the draw, then uh, it uh, 
it's a tough road, but watch the celebration after the after that missed nine or missed ten. Sorry, and it was a good nine that Filler made using the ten. We thought at bottom the match, but not yet. You want to keep the crowd in their seats for a little while longer. Don't forget, these are short races. If you get some kind of momentum going here, things can turn quick. Ten ball, no. Hmm. Be interesting to see how big of a factor the ten ball plays in this rack because it's hanging right over the side. So, anytime that there's any kind of Combination possibilities where the players are going to be going after it. Filler is going to get aggressive here and try to jump at the one, possibly into the 10, low percentage, but more playing the cue ball behind the 3 6 9. Feel like he left enough of the one to pocket it. Yeah. Roland will be able to. Oh, he's calling the ten. Watch this shot. Can bring the house down if this one goes in. Josh never even got out of his chair. It's a good try, actually. Didn't miss it by much. I feel like you have to call the 10 again here. Have an easier chance, but an equal two in the corner. Hopkin for the safety. Yeah, I just didn't like where the cue ball was going off the two there. I knew he'd be able to get him real good behind the eight. Interestingly, the two actually didn't get in a spot where he's going to be able to combo the ten in. Three is kind of tough to get to off the two. So the rack's not over yet. Try. Oh, he's going to move the two into a spot where he can combo it. I feel like he'll go after it here. Guaranteed. He's coming right to the back end of the table. 2 10. For two, four, one score lines in each set. Yeah, it's there. And four, one in set number two as well. Josh Filler completes the win. He will move on to the third round. A two ten combination puts the ribbon on this one. Filler. Happy with the performance, no doubt. We'll be back with more action. Stay with us. It doesn't matter what the format is, the better player will still win. This tempo to win the title. He is your champion.
Philippines are the world champions.